Welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today I'm going to show you how I made this fantastical tree. So the fantastical thing about this guy is anybody can make one. You don't need any special supplies. There's no clay and there's no wires needed. He's pretty old school for me. He's made pretty much the exact same way I made my very first tree in 2013 when I had no idea what I was doing and I just wanted to replicate bark. I was trying to make something for my little gnome at the time. So, and this is a technique I've used many times over the years. I have since started using clay, and you can make the basic form and add clay to it, but that's not in this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this bark without using clay at all. You'll need basic supplies to build your tree. To build the tree form, I used aluminum foil, masking tape, glue. Any glue is going to work, a tacky glue or a white glue. Mod Podge even would work, and a cheap paper towel. You don't want any real thick paper towel. If you find yourself at home and you only have thick paper towel to work with, you can separate the layers. I'm also going to show you how to paint the tree in this video, and I used craft acrylic paint in black, cinnamon brown, burnt umber, and beige. And to get his eyes all aglow, I use tissue paper. You can use any color. I like using the yellow because they glow really well with the yellow, but you can use red, orange, white, any color will do. I use the tea light. I get these at the dollar store. And a pencil comes in handy, one with an eraser on the end. You can see I also added some moss and just a couple of leaves. The leaves I got from an arrangement I found in the thrift store. I paid about $2 for the whole arrangement, and I just used pieces off of that when I need it. And the moss I gathered at my parents' property, but you can find moss in Walmart, craft stores, or dollar stores. And to attach the moss, I used a tacky glue. The regular white glue will work as well. I found tacky glue grabs really fast, and once it's on there, it's stuck on pretty good. All right, my friends, let's get started. I'm making this tree in the video, and to make this basic form right here, I started off with about six feet of tin foil. Let's get started. Alright guys, the first step I take is I make a form like this. And to get that form, that's the base form for the tree, and then we're going to build around that. To get that, I roll out about six feet of tin foil, and then I fold it in half. So there's about three, maybe three and a quarter feet. It, you don't have to be precise, you just want a nice chunk of tin foil to work with. And now I'm going to roll this up, but I'm going to roll it up in a way that I get this little hollow piece on the top. So let's do that together. Before I do that, I want to show you a little bit of the design of the tree. So here's the hole in the back of the head where I stick my tea light and that's what makes the eyes glow. So to get this little hollow bit on top I work it into the tin foil as I'm rolling it. So here's what I just did. You can see a big hole there. Now you don't have to do it this way. I just found this step a little bit easier than having to dig it out after. So I'm going to show you what I mean here. I'm going to roll this up and remember it's a crooked haunted tree, it does not be perfect. But I'm going to roll it up with my hand here. So I'm going to be rolling around my hand. Keep my hand in there so I create a little bowl as I'm rolling. So I'm going to turn the volume down because it's a horrible sound. And let's get rolling. There we go, we have a little bowl on top. And then the bottom here, I'm going to squish into the table to get a flat bottom. So that's this is the base, and then we're going to build up around this tree. So now we want to make a little spot for our face. Where's our face going to be? So I'm going to put one right here. And then the back of it is going to have a hole for the tea light. So I'm just going to make a hole in the back of this now. And you can actually just work it with your fingers. I'll put my tea light in there. So there's the start. I'm going to actually put tape around that now so I can keep that shape. Okay, so now I know that's where my tea light's going to go. And the face I'm going to worry about after. I'm not going to do that right now because while I'm uh, building the form, it's just going to keep getting messed up so I'm going to leave the face until after. Okay so now I want to decide where my arms are going to go. So I got about a foot of tin foil here and I'm just going to squish it up. So there's the beginning of my one arm and I've 
have the bottom flat open so I can have a bigger area to tape to the tree. Okay, we're going to start with that. I'm going to tape that on there. I'm going to build the hands on there after I'm done the trunk of the tree here. So I want to build onto the trunk now. Now the wonderful thing about tinfoil building is you can change your mind at any time. You're not stuck with any one design ever. So you can try out something and if you don't like it then you can just remove it and or cut it away and try something else. I'm not sure if I'm totally done with the trunk yet, but it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to cover all of it with masking tape. Okay, so I got one layer of masking tape around the whole trunk. And now I'm going to work a little bit on the inside here to give it a little bit more stability because it's pretty flimsy right now, especially where I put the tea light into. So what I want to do is build up the area around the tea light from the inside. Okay, I just took a strip of tin foil and I rolled it up into a roll like this and now I'm going to put it around that tea light on the inside and that will build up some of that strength around there so let's do that I'm framing that tea light hole is what I'm doing from the inside so that gives it a lot more stability inside there okay I'll just get a piece of tape in there to hold it in place and then I can see what else I need to add to it Okay, so let's see, I'm squishing it around the light with my thumb, pushing it in towards the light itself, and it creates a little nest for it. Yeah, that's great right there. So now I'm going to add my tape. There we go, that's a perfect fit. Okay, I just want to add one more layer inside here behind the face. So I just took a piece of tin foil, just a square. I'm going to fold it up and then I'm going to fold it again. And now I'm going to lay this inside there, push it into place. Now I will put masking tape over the whole thing. Okay, so all covered in there. Before I work on the face, I want to add my branches. And I had to do it off camera the first time because I kind of forgot <laughs> how I did this and trying to figure out the easiest way for you guys. So I just take a piece of tin foil and I folded it and I'm going to squish it up the one part. Okay, and I'm going to wrap it around the end. I'm going to add a piece of tape just to make sure it stays put. The number of fingers is totally up to you. I just start off by making little slits. Alright guys, now remember when you're doing this part it's going to feel a little bit weird because the middle two are going to be very very flimsy, but remember you can build onto tin foil and it starts off flimsy but it ends up pretty sturdy. And I'm going to squish them together. And what I did here was, I created a space right here for another finger. And now I can add to the length of them, but before I do anything else, I'm just going to make them more stable with some tape. So I just uh, make some narrow strips, and I go right through the middle of two fingers. And I do that for every single one of them. So there's the base of the hand. Now you can add to every individual finger. You can build it up. I stuck a piece of tin foil, rolled it over, and now I'm going to place it on over top. 
and create that first finger. Okay, so over here I have a branch that I don't like, so I'm just going to remove it. Fix the wound with some tape. And I'm going to add a branch over here on the side. Yeah, I'm much happier with that, so I'm going to tape it in place. So now all I have to do is cover all the fingers with tape. So you want to cover the fingers completely with your tape. And what I do is just lay it over top the finger and just push it all into place. We need to strengthen up this floppy branch here. And I'd already done this one, and all it is is just adding more tinfoil. And I'm going to add a, a bit of bulk down here to kind of hold it up. when you put your masking tape on this part you want to go across the tree and not with the branch you want to go against the grain so to speak just adds a bit more um, stability to the branch so you want to wrap it this way so I think he's looking pretty spooky and I'm I'm pretty happy with his shape and everything the last thing I want to do before I move on to the next step is if I wanted to add any more little details like adding little bumps like this I'm going to do that right now and all I do is just take little bits of tin foil like these branches here I want to have some knuckles there make it look a little bit more creepy so I'll just put little bunches of tin foil wherever I want the uh, bumps to go so I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and see what we got look at how creepy that looks now with those added bumps on there. I love that. All these little extra little details really will add to the finished look of the piece. Look at how creepy that looks. Oh, <laughs> I love it. That actually looks like a spider. Awesome. And then I filled in, you'll notice, a little bit in here and behind. Added a little bit more bulk behind here. Alright, I think it's safe to say I can't draw, <laughs> but after it's all done, it looks okay. Okay, so I'm just going to cut these out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is get some tape into that exposed foil in there. Okay, I'm going to lay it on the side and then I'm going to use my pencil to push it in and cover up that foil. There we go. So I used my pencil and the dull side of my knife to make a little more details. I push it in there and then push it down to make a bit more of elongated mouth on this side too. So I use the doll end or side, sorry. And the back inside, you want to make sure that this is all covered with masking tape as well because we are going to be gluing inside of here. So we can't glue the tin foil. So you have to make sure that you put in your masking tape back here. All right, guys, now we're going to create the top of the head. And I put a little bowl in there. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One is to block off the light from the from the top so the tea light shows more from behind. If it was wide open on top, you wouldn't be able to see the light as well flickering behind there. So that just blocks the light from escaping. And the other reason is it can also hold a tea light on top or anything else that you want to display. Or it could hold candy too, right? So you want to think about these things while you're designing. Do you want to hold a little bit of candy up there, you want to hold tea light. So what we do to do this part is take about a foot of tin foil and fold it over once. Now you place it on top of the head and just push it down just a little ways and squeeze
squeeze the area, pinch all the area around the edge of the tree. Okay, now I'm going to fold these parts inward and lift them up. So the only thing that you don't want to happen is have the bowl so deep that you can see it through the eyes. So just make sure that doesn't happen. And if you see it, just push it upwards and then push it back down there. Okay, so from here, if you wanted to create a bowl on top, you can do that with your tin foil. Just create a larger bowl and that would make a, a cool little candy display. This guy is actually going to go into my little forest that I'm building. So I want to make the top of his head look like broken, like a broken tree, like it fell off on the top. So I'm just going to build up the sides just a little bit. Take a piece of tin foil, and I'm just going to work my design now on top. Now it's time to uh, attach it to the top of the head and remember you don't want to see the bottom of the bowl through the eyes so just make sure your bowl isn't so deep that you're seeing it through the eyes and once you're satisfied with how it looks then put your tape on and go from the inside along the outside and down part ways of the tree to make sure it stays uh, totally attached. Okay, and the top, you don't want to have just skinny uh, edges on the top. Push them down a little bit with your finger and pinch the top, just like I did with this guy here. And create a little bit more of an edge, a flatter edge on top. And that will just look like the thickness of the bark that's broken off. Okay, I'm loving that look. And I think I want to add a little bit of a break here. Yeah, I like that. So any breaks I make, I will cover up any exposed tin foil. And now if you wanted to add uh, little features like this, like a little bit of eyebrow, you can do that now as well. I'm going to do it like this, but you can also uh, do it with the paper. Actually, this guy here, there's no tin foil under there. I did all that design with the paper itself. I have some wax paper down on my table to protect my tape, my table and I have my Lazy Susan here and I put a piece of wax paper underneath the tree itself. The wax paper comes in handy because once the final um, bark layer is on, the glue is going to be dripping down. When it's all dry, you can just take this wax paper off the very bottom and if the wax paper is stuck at all, you can just cut it off. So it's a nice little thing to have underneath when this is drying. And we're not going to be putting any material underneath the tree on the very base. Okay, so this part is very messy and um, the end results are worth it though. So let's get started. In here is a cup of glue, I believe, maybe a little bit more, and maybe a quarter cup of water. I put water in there because it makes it easier to work with. You don't want the glue too runny though. You just want it to be runny enough that it's easy to work with. Once you start doing this step, you'll figure out the texture that you prefer to work with. So the final step you want to do before you put this glue mixture on is make sure all your tape is nice and stuck to your fingers, like there's no places where it's sticking up. And yeah, I just go over, I just do a once over on the whole piece and just check out the tape and how it's looking, especially around the fingers. So once you're happy with all of that, then we're going to take our Scott towel and I cut mine down in, in half, make them smaller, easier to work with. And I'm going to dip it into the glue. So I've just dipped one side in, just laid it on top of the glue, pull it out, fold it in half, and just pull the excess off. And if this step turns you off, what you could do is brush the glue on, lay a piece of um, paper towel over top, and then spray some glue on, glue and water, and then squish it all up. I've been doing this method for a very long time since I actually looked at my blog to see the first time I've done it and it was 2013. So this method works for me, but you know it's not for everybody, so if you can 
tweak it to find something that works better for you, then by all means do that. Okay, I'm going to lay it on top, and I'm going to squish this one up into those wrinkles there. Lay it there. I want this one to be really wrinkly, and you can use paper as well. Like um, in 2013, I had a real gorgeous bark effect with some paper. Um, it was a recycled paper. It's kind of like the same thickness as sketch paper. And I soaked that in glue and put that on, and it gave me some real nice bark effect. But this paper towel was pretty quick and easy to use. Lay my paper towel in there. Fold it in half, pull off the excess. So I get the idea. I've laid down uh, about five pieces, uh, wrinkled it out real good, and they overlapped each other, of course. I got uh, the majority on the back, and this arm done, and the fingers. But underneath the hand, underneath the, the palm part, isn't got any uh, paper towel yet. I'm going to wait until it's dry. And then I'm going to flip them over and work on the underside. And that will be the same time that I do the face. Okay, so if your um, hand becomes so heavy from the weight of the glue, you can stick something underneath there and just prop it up. Because once it's dry, it's dry and it will stay in the position that you put it in. So I just put a little pencil there. So now I'm going to work on the fingers. So for this one, you're going to need smaller pieces of paper towel. And it doesn't matter where you start. You could start on the arm and work your way down, or start on the fingers and work your way up. It doesn't matter. So you don't want the piece too wide. That might be a little bit too wide. Just tear it down. Okay, and lay it over top. And I'm overlapping. There's the tip here. And this piece goes a little bit beyond that. And I'll twist the end a little bit too long, so I'll just rip some off. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. You can see I did push the uh, towel into here, just around the edge. Because now I'm going to leave it dry, and then once it's dry, I will add the bark to the palm of the hands, and then I'm going to work more on his face, and he'll have more face details in the next step. So I'm going to get a couple of fans, I'm going to set the fans on it, and let it dry. So about three hours went by, and I was able to turn him upside down, he was dry enough, and worked on the palm of his hands, didn't take very long at all. And now I'm going to work on his face, so I'm going to be using paper towel again, and I'm just going to tear these down into smaller uh, pieces, easier to work with. I want to make little details on his face, and little pieces are easier to work with. I'm going to get his face nice and wrinkled up. The face is always my favorite part. When you can bring something to life that you've made, give it a face and a personality, that's the best feeling. It really is. And then I think of names after, which I'm going to have to do for this guy. Okay, I've got him propped up on all sorts of different props here so I can show you his face up close. So I got his forehead done there. And I'm going to take little bits at a time. I'm just going to work around his face. I want to get some inside those holes too. This is where I thought I might add his nose. So I would just take uh, towel and squish it up into any type of shape that I so desire. Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> and that always makes all the difference in the world. Oh my gosh. Pop 
popping in with an edit before your face is dry of course once you have all your details figured out on your eyes and your mouth and you've pushed all the material inside those holes if you see any sticking up and you can't get at them you can turn the piece around with the back end of a pencil dip it in glue first you can push those down okay, I've added a bit more around his cheeks and I added eyebrows now I'm going to give him a beard and I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not but let's give it a try here just a few more layers of paper towel to create that face I would say I spent about 20 minutes on it so now I'm going to set it in front of the fan and let it dry so you can see he's still wet there's glue inside there that's still wet but the exterior of him is completely dry so I can paint him because it's just glue and that's it and <laughs> so it's not going to mold or anything it's just glue inside there so it will dry eventually and this is what it looks like when it's completely dry see the difference all that white that you see is wet glue so as it dries uh, some of these lines will tighten up and you'll notice a little bit of a difference in the overall look of the piece and these knot holes here are just made with the paper towel again just soaked in glue made a little roll and just did a circle and played around with it until I was happy with how it looked some places I added a little bit more texture just with the paper towel now we can start painting our tree. We're going to create a wash first. So we're going to do that with our black paint. We're going to take a whole bottle of black paint and we're going to mix it in with a whole bottle of water. And mix it up really well. Before you do that though, take out a cap full of the paint and set it aside. A cap full or so and set it aside because we want to use some black paint when we're all done painting the tree and it's all dry. We're going to be using some black paint again to do some shadowing work. So once you get out your little bit of paint and set it aside, a whole bottle mixed in with a whole bottle of water. Alright guys, I started painting and I thought my camera was turned on and it wasn't. I have my craft paint, one bottle mixed with one bottle of water, mixed up really well. And you want that much water in it because it will help get all the paint into all those little cracks in the tree because there's so many cracks. So it will just cut half the time out of painting. Popping in with a heads up, once you start painting, the surface is going to soften up quite a bit and that's totally normal. There's nothing to worry about. This piece will harden right back up again. And it's a solid little piece. You can drop these things and nothing will happen to them. So keep painting. There's nothing to worry about. So you'll notice after your paint is dry, when you turn the tree at different angles, you'll see little white spots. Like here's one here, there's some inside there, and some here. And that will happen no matter how hard you try to get that paint into every crack. That's why the watered down paint helps so much. Um, if you didn't water it down, there'd be so many more white spots than there is right now. So what you want to do is you want to cover those in. You want to wait till everything's dry and then you'll really see them. Cover those in because they will um, show up on your final coat of paint. Those little white spots in there. And the other thing is, I didn't do this myself, I, I guess I was distracted, but when you start painting, I would do underneath the palms first and underneath the fingers, and then you don't have to worry about doing so much paint after you get the first step done. The first coat is all dry, so I'm going to put the second coat on, and I'm using the burnt umber, and there's no water in this, and I'm going to use a dry brush. So I'm just painting over the surface. I'm not going to be getting into all the cracks. Because we want to keep the uh, black in the cracks. That burnt umber coat is dry. And now I'm going to use my cinnamon brown. And I'll dip my brush in and just get off the excess of a dry brushing. And I'm going to do a coat of that, and I'm just going to go lightly over the surface and not rub it into all the cracks. Just lightly over the surface. Get the excess off. Alright, the cinnamon brown coat is dry, and now I'm going to use my beige. I'm going to dip it into that 
base. I'm going to get the majority of it off my brush. We only want a little bit on the brush and we're going to just go very lightly over top. We're just highlighting now. That coat is nice and dry. Now I'm shadowing um, different areas and I'm going to take straight black, no water mixed in it, dip my brush and get the excess off and now I'm going to go around and shadow out all the deep crevices and this adds a lot of depth to your tree. Like in here I'd want to give that some nice shadow inside there. See how different that looks now? And I want to add black on the inside of those ridges for sure. Because this guy is a haunted, wicked tree, he's getting a lot more black than my usual trees do. So you can see I've added lots of black. I wasn't shy with the black, but see how that adds so much dimension? It's absolutely fantastic. Once you're done with your black, we are going to do a little bit of beige again, just a tiny, tiny bit. Dip your brush in there, just the ends, and get the majority of it off. And just gently go over all the parts that are sticking out towards you. And that just gives a highlight. It's like the opposite effect of the uh, black, of course. And it just makes parts of the bark stand out more. The batteries in these lights last a long time, so you shouldn't have to pull it out too often. But what I did with mine to make it easier to pull out was just add a little tab and I'm going to show you how I did it in the next step. And I also painted the back of the, the light black and then burnt umber. Now the paint's not going to totally stick, you could scrape it off, but because it's not going to be touched too often I thought it was okay just to throw the paint on there. And if you leave it alone then the paint will stay on there just fine. Alright, so let's add this little tab. And I was just thinking probably would be a good idea to add something that will help you pull it out in the future. And what I did was I took a piece of ribbon. <laughs> I didn't have anything else on hand that would work. I like this because it's nice and thin and it's not going to interfere with the, the fitting of the tea light. So I cut a hole right in the middle with my scissors. And I'll put my tea light there. Now I'm not sure if glue will work on this. But I'm going to try it. Okay, that's dried. Now if I pulled on it, of course it would come off, but it's going to stay put there if I don't mess around with it. So I'm just going to cut one of these free. And I'll stick it inside there. Yeah, that works. So I'm going to leave that like that, and I'm just going to cut this a bit shorter. You know what I could do? I could make a little tab right here. Maybe I'll do that instead. Put glue on the end. Alright my friends, time to make his eyes glow. And this part's pretty simple. If you have a pencil on hand, they come on with the eraser on the end. And a piece of tissue paper, whatever color you've chosen. And my tissue paper is quite a bit bigger than the hole of it in the back of the head. And that's because once we get this paper in there, I don't want it moving around. And I don't want to have to glue it inside. Because that would be kind of difficult to do. If you have a smaller tree like this one here, where you can just reach in, you could actually glue the tissue paper right to the back of the eyes and that would work well. But if you have made a big one like this, then you want a piece bigger than the hole itself. We're going to squish it up. and push it in there. Then using your pencil, the back end of your pencil, spread it open and get it all behind the eyes and the mouth. Alright, let's give this a try.
So I have some real moss that I gathered up in, I believe it was July of this year, now it's October. So it's all dried out and I'm going to add it to my tree with tacky glue. Glue it in place. I gathered this moss from my dad's property, my parents' property I should say. They have a ton of it. So I didn't go crazy with the moss, I just added a little patch here and there. And that tacky glue did a great job. I can rub over the moss and that stays put. So just regular tacky glue will hold it in place. And being real moss, I think it looks pretty cool. Add a little bit to the fingers along the back of the fingers. Didn't want the moss to overtake the tree, so I just added a little bit. Okay, so the last thing before I go, the leaves. Now if you are adding artificial leaves like I've done here, what you can do to attach it is poke a hole on the top or wherever you want to stick a leaf and you can push it into the hole and glue it or you can use a little wire to attach it. I would put this in here, bend over the tip and then cut off the excess so you'd have a little stem made with the wire and then you'd stick glue in there and shove the wire down into that hole. And once it's dry it'll stick. Sometimes the leaves will have its own stem so you can just poke a little hole like I said and push that in there. I would use the tacky glue as well even if you get it stuck in there pretty good because once you have the tacky glue is dry you can't see it and it holds everything pretty securely. Alright my friends that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and if you did find it helpful please give the video a thumbs up. I'd sure appreciate that and I'd sure love to see a picture of your tree if you've made one. You can post pictures on my Facebook page Dollhouses and the things that go in them. The link is in the description box below. Until next time, happy building!